Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I'm Dr. Innocent from Uganda. I bring greetings from Uganda. Uh, I'm very privileged to be standing in front of honorable people like you. And um, I bring greetings from my family. Today is a very remarkable day in my family because uh, I have two children and uh, today is their birthday and uh, <laughs> today is their birthday. They are twins and uh, four years ago we got twins and uh, at least I'm very happy. So I'm going to be sharing my experience on Ebola outbreak in Uganda and uh, we had an epidemic uh, in 2012 and uh, this is my personal experience. I'm going to be sharing about my personal experience about uh, Ebola, managing Ebola in austere conditions, like in a resource limited setting. I thank Captain Michael for their humble uh, introduction. And I also like to acknowledge the people I've worked with from Usamrid, uh, in, way, way back in Uganda, that is uh, uh, Major Matthew Chambers and then Major, Major Elena Kwan and uh, Captain Edrisa Staples. They've been very good people. Now, in, in Uganda, our health system is organized in a, in a, a way that uh, we begin with the community and from the community level, we have the village health teams. And the village health teams, we have volunteers who come and, uh, and they identify health conditions and then, and then they link the, 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 the people who are having those conditions to the services, to, to the health services. Then from the from the village health teams, we go to the, uh, to the parish level. Uh, then at the parish level, we have health center tool. And uh, a health center tool in our setting uh, offers services which are mainly outpatient work. Like they treat minor illnesses. Okay, they don't have, they don't have, in, uh, they don't have an inpatient ward. They do not have a laboratory. They just actually rely on, uh, on rapid diagnostic tests. And then they treat just simple, simple illnesses. Now, like if you go to a health center too, and then maybe you fail, and uh, maybe you need to be... You, you need to be referred, then we go to a level three facility. So a level three facility in our setting, actually it does outpatient work. We admit some patients and then we also do maternal and child health services, like for example, conducting deliveries, immunization, and then they also do outreaches actually for antenatal and immunizations in the communities in, down like in the, in the catchment areas where they serve. And then from there, we go to a level four facility, like for the one actually where I'm working, and the level four facility, now we do all the services of health center three, but we add on uh, other services, like for example, we admit, and then we, we do operations. We, we have theaters, and so we do, but our major emphasis on operations that we do in a level four facility are, main, are majorly cesarean sections and, uh, and uh, emergency obstetric care services because our maternal mortality rate as a country is a little high. So I think it's one of the measures that was put in place to bring down the, the maternal mortality rate because at the moment we had 437 per 10,000 live, per 100,000 live births. So then from there we got the district hospital now, the district hospital, it is in a way deceptive because ideally, if you hear this, we have 112 districts in Uganda, but uh, we don't have 112 uh, district hospitals. We have actually much fewer, okay, there are less than half of that. But ideally, every district is supposed to have a district hospital, which is supposed to oversee all the other lower facilities. And then from that, we have regions where we have the regional facilities, where we have uh, 11 regional facilities and then the national referral. So in a way that's how our structure is, is arranged in our setting in Uganda. Now, if you, now if you, you go to a district, uh, any district in Uganda, uh, on top of having those facilities, so those are facilities are arranged in a way that uh, they form, you have a district and then you have a health sub-district in them. So a health sub-district actually, like uh, is supposed to have, is, is headed by a level four facility. So every level of facility in charge is supposed to take care of all the other facilities. Like for example, where I come from, that is Nyimbo Health Center 4. We, uh, our facility, we, we oversee 23 other facility, lower facilities. That is like 13 level three facilities and then the rest being level two facilities. So this is the map of Africa, which shows Uganda. It is in the heart of Africa. But if you look at Uganda by way of its position, we have very many good things which come with it, but also challenges which come with it. Uh, in the northern bit of our country, we have Southern Sudan, which is a very new country. We also have DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, 
in the west. Then we have, in the southwest, we have Rwanda, and then we have uh, Tanzania to the south, and then in the eastern bit, we have Kenya. Now, the, the problem we have is that uh, most of our borders in Uganda are porous. Reason being that, uh, reason being that the DRC and uh, Southern Sudan, which, which, which take actually the biggest like, bit of our boundary, like we, we share with them the biggest bit of the boundary, they have been having challenges, political instability in these settings. So at the end of the day, this makes uh, uh, health service delivery around these borders be very hard and surveillance of disease surveillance to be very, very Hard because at the end of the day, patients end up like I, because of the porous nature, they end up running like from one bit of the country to the other. Like for example, if there is a problem in Eastern DRC, you find very many refugees crossing into Uganda, and then and the same thing has been happening actually in in, uh, in Southern Sudan because even currently they are not they are, they have been having challenges. So in a way, this poses very many health risks to us because at the end of the day, we end up getting very many diseases uh, flowing into the country. Then we have the map of Uganda and. and the red bit is, uh, is, is Luero district, where I come from. Our total population as a district is around 472,000 people. And our main economic activity is subsistence farming. Uh, we don't do much of commercial farming. Most of the people actually they are poor and uh, they just grow something to eat and, uh, and then to live on. Now, Luero district, we have been hit by two Ebola epidemics, actually, uh, uh, so far. Uh, but, uh, but, but as a country, they are much more than that. But uh, uh, like, for example, this Ebola outbreak that I'm talking about like today, you find that Kampala is around, uh, around here, which is like on Lake Victoria. And then for us, it is like 30 kilometers away from Luero district. So this is uh, of, of clinical significance because at the end of the day, if you have an outbreak in, this, in, in Luero district, which is very near the city center, and our cities are not as organized. I was talking to Captain Mike recently. They are not as organized as Washington and Atlanta. Actually, ours is total chaos. So if you have, if you have um, an outbreak in this setting, which is 30 kilometers away, and you don't manage it very well, and then by any chance it spills into the, into the city center, it can spill to uncontrollable. I th and I, I have a feeling it might have been the, pr the problem which our colleagues in West Africa might have faced. So, so and uh, because of the, the, the proximity to the city and then the, the highway which goes through us, it also makes us to be like a high risk area. Because you find that uh, on top of us being actually on the, on the highway and being near the city, we have um, the headquarters of the barracks of the army of the Uganda People's Defense Forces. Actually, it is, a, it is in our health sub-district and in our district, it's in Bombo. If you have been following maybe the news and what, most of the times, actually, our soldiers that have been involved, actually, in peacemaking missions around the continent because they, they form an integral part of uh, African Union. And then also there is IGAD, which has been formed of recent, which helps like in stabilizing the nations around. So you find that the they keep moving from one place to another. So, so at the end of the day, today they are in Bombo, the next time they might be deployed in, uh, in Congo, the other time they're deployed in Southern Sudan. We have some in Somalia, we have some in Central African Republic. So at the end of the day, their, their movements also, they pose a health risk like to us. And, and when they come, they are not regulated because they come and then uh, we stay with them like in, the, like in the civilian community. So meaning that if they come with any dangerous pathogen, it can be very easy for it to, to, to interface with, uh, with the other civilian community in the country. So that is the other thing about Luero district. Now, uh, maybe background, the Ebola virus causes a highly infectious hemorrhagic fever with uh, a case fatality rate of over, which is between 29 to 90%. Now, in our setting, I think the, the lowest fatality rate of Ebola that we have had was 25, and then we also had one time when we had 100%, where all the cases which were identified actually passed away. So, and the virus was first identified in 1976 and has caused significant epidemics in uh, Southern Sudan uh, and, uh, and in uh, and, uh, and in some parts of Zaire. There are five distinct species of Ebola virus, and here we have Bundibujo, Cote d'Ivoire, Reston, Sudan, and Zaire. But in our setting, actually, in Uganda, the, 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 the biggest problems actually we have been having have been with, uh, have been with Zaire, Bundibujo, 
and uh, Southern Sudan. Those, the Sudan, those three strains are, are the ones which have been the biggest problems. So Bundibujo, Sudan, and Zaire species, yes, I've already talked about that. So these are the, uh, the confirmed and suspected Ebola cases that we have had since 2000 as a country. And if you look at this, Luero features on this, like of the 112 districts which we have in the country, Luero features twice on this, on this red chart. And the first one is in, is in 2012, where we had seven cases which were confirmed and four of them passed away. And the index was uh, a border border driver. In our setting, we have people who drive motorcycles to ferry passengers from one part of the, the country, so from one part, one part to another. So in this particular case, actually, we had the, uh, the, uh, the index case which we suspected, which, we, which went through our system actually, and he noticed. Uh, this case came and uh, understand like she, uh, this gentleman ferried a passenger who still was also unknown, and then later he developed symptoms. So he went to a nearby clinic. When he went to a nearby clinic, they did a blood slide for malaria parasites, and it turned out to be positive. So they started IV quinine treatment, and he got three doses of treatment. And then like, he was like improving. Then later he wasn't. So when he wasn't, he was referred to the military hospital, Bombo Military Hospital. So reaching there, they treated still with IV quinine. They put IV fluids and some antibiotics, but still she deteriorated, and then he passed away. But at this point, actually, he passes away. Then the people, uh, the, the, the relatives are given their body, and then they took it and buried. And still at this point, uh, we, we didn't pick that it was it that, that it that, that we, ha we were having an, a dangerous pathogen. So, so later the, the, the sisters and uh, uh, developed like we shall be seeing shortly. Then the. the in 2012, actually, now the biggest challenge that we had around that same time is that we had concurrent epidemic of Ebola in, in Uganda still around the same time, which was in Chivale district. And in this one, actually, 24 cases were confirmed and 17 of them died. Now, maybe w w one thing is that to make some of these points straight is that... Uh, of these cases, none of them actually ever denied ever going into the Chivale area because Chivale is in western Uganda and for us we are in central. So all of them denied that uh, they, they, had been to, they had been to that side, so, which was a little tricky. Then uh, we had another epidemic which was in Luero and this one, we had one, one case and then the, the case passed away, but the good news is that they didn't transmit the virus to anyone. And then we also had the Wundibujo where 29 people succumbed out of the 113 which, who were confirmed. And then, and then the, the, the most famous one has, was the one in 2000 in Guru, which actually we had a number of health workers in our setting who passed away in this epidemic. So this is a map which shows some of the cases that we have been having since 2000 and how they have been located, and, uh, like in the country. And if you look at this map, it shows that at least the, the cases are not from a particular region. They are it's like almost every region, somehow, somewhere, that it has been affected in a way or the other. So Nyumba Health Center for where I come from, th th that is our outpatient department. And by the time it was housing the laboratory and then the store for drugs, and uh, also the offices of the facility. Maybe it should be noted that uh, in our setting, our facilities are not as huge as the ones I've seen this side. <laughs> yes, because like, actually I went, I was telling Captain Mike that some of the facilities here, they look like five-star hotels. <laughs> but for us, if you come to our setting, actually, uh, and you are from the US, you might even get more sick, actually, if you are not, because of how, what you are going to see. Now, this is the inpatient department, and uh, that is where we admit our patients. And uh, it has two wings, one for females and one for the males. And it is 12-bed capacity with six beds on either side. The inpatient wing uh, in our setting, most of the times actually we get overflow of cases. And uh, actually, for us, it is not used to find patients on the floor. So the patients, like, the, the, if you come and then maybe the, the ward is very full, you come with your mattress and then you put it on the floor. The, the, the only good news is that at least you'll get a health worker to attend to you. So we, ha we, have, two, we have two wings, a male and female, and then maybe it, it also houses uh, like uh, a small store for, for where their drugs are, are kept. And now this is the inpatient the, the, the side, how it looks like inside. Like I said, it is six bed capacity. So actually, the first case actually we suspected was on this bed, and then the sister was on the, the opposite bed. And then 
This is the roof, how the roof looks like. The ceiling actually flew off, and it was measured by the dung which comes from the bats. Yeah. Now, uh, it is important. Uh, I didn't put this, this slide here for, um, for any other reason, but the thing is that there is a connection between bats and uh, Ebola virus. So, and and uh, one of the biggest challenges that we have actually in our setting is that we live with bats uh, every day, actually, uh, everywhere. Actually, if you have bats in your house, it is not an issue in some settings, actually. Because like, if we can have them in a facility, then what about in a home? So at the end of the day, and, uh, and we have had actually epidemics where we have failed to, to get the, the interface between like the index case and where they contracted. And we have just been speculating, but these are some of the clues that we can come up with that maybe it was but maybe it was this, maybe it was the other. So one thing uh, before uh, I, I take you through the cases that we had is that uh, one of the learning points that I, uh, like I said that uh, this, this is my experience as innocent, not anyone else. So one of the, one of, one of the, one of the, the learning points which I learned is that uh, records are very key in, uh, in uh, identifying epidemics. R records are very key in identifying some of these very infectious agents. And, uh, and good records, they begin with a good history which is taken by the health worker. On a good day, if I went and I sat in the outpatient clinic, uh, in the eight hours, I can see between 80 to 100 and maybe 150 patients in just one day. So meaning that because of the system that we are, that we are, that we are having, uh, it means that uh, the patient load is too much for a doctor in Uganda. Like, after, like I said, the health sub-district which supervises the, 20, the 23 where I come from, like for example, it only has two doctors who are supposed to see patients, to do the operations and to do the supervision work, so which is very challenging. So at the end of the day, you find that uh, this one, this one has, uh, has has led to some of us actually not doing things that we are supposed to do them. Not because we are negligent or not very professional, but because of the circumstances that are around it. And one of the things is history, because number one is that uh, if you are to take a good history for a hundred patients, that means that you are going to sleep at the hospital. I'm going to take the whole day seeing patients. Because just imagine, uh, if you're going to take uh, 10 minutes per patient, that means in one hour you're going to see only six patients. And in 10 hours you're going to see 60 patients. What about the balance? So you know, they have to be very fast, do something very fast, like at the end of the day, all the patients get a service, which is a little challenging. So, so, so history is, is one of the biggest uh, challenges that we have because of the, 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 the patient load that we have. And then the other thing about the, the history is that in most of our settings, actually, uh, in Africa, I don't know, I've not, okay, in Uganda, because I'm not very sure about other countries, is that uh, we do not have the stationery which you need, like, to take a decent history. Because, like, for example, ideally we're supposed to have patient files which are supposed to be uh, kept in the records of the hospital. But you find that all our hospitals actually, do, what we do is that if you are to, if you're, if you're a patient and you visited a typical facility in Uganda, you're supposed to go with a book. And when you go with a book, then the doctor is going to see you write whatever they write in your book. And then at the end of the day, you carry your book home. So then, and, and our patients are not very good at record keeping. So what happens is that the next time they are coming back, they come with a new book. Eh? You get. So at the end of the day, you are always seeing new patients. You cannot keep track of what transpired on the previous visit, because, and that's one of the biggest challenges. So, but uh, but at our facility, actually, where I was, is that for uh, at least I could not do it for all, but at least I designed a tool, which was for patients who are admitted, and for every admitted patient, I designed uh, this one, whereby we could capture this important information, and for this one. It is supposed to be left at the facility. Now this one, I, I, I put it here because it is ours alone. You are not going to find it anywhere else because we designed it at, at Nyimba Health Center for only. So we designed it and uh, because we realized that, uh, uh, I, I, because we, we thought that maybe the patients who are admitted are more critical compared to the ones who are outpatient. So, and, uh, and our funds, uh, uh, when I was in, uh, attending a, a conference in, uh, a conference in uh, 
Atlanta recently. Uh, one of the, uh, the people who are running, I think, the medical department of California was giving a, a, uh, was a presentation. And then she said that, uh, that uh, in, in California, 12 million people, uh, they, they have 12 million people, and the budget for 12 million people is $90 billion for health. Now, this, that, that alone <laughs> can run the whole budget for the whole country, Uganda, actually, and even we get a surplus. So, so I realize that we have very many different... Now, like, now, now like, for us, like, for example, for us, our budget, like, for example, is uh, around 2.5 million shillings, which is, uh, like, $1,000 per three months for, to run all these activities I've talked about in a level, in, in a level for facility and the health sub-district at that. $1,000 to buy fuel for the ambulance, to do all the repairs, to buy stationery, and to do it, which is very, very, very challenging. So, so at the end of the day, you find that most of the units actually, they don't have records and they don't keep records. Actually, if you go, maybe, you, if you're lucky and maybe you, you, go and you are going to do maybe a retrospective study and you need to retrieve information from patient files in maybe in the very big hospitals but in the in the lower units level four two three uh, you cannot get anything because of the challenges that i've i've, I've listed <laughs>